who takes up those carries. Kenyon Barner, everyone talks about well, Michael James, how fast he is. Right. Right. Kenyon Barner's on the 100, the 200, the 4x1, the, six door, the 60 indoor track. <laughs> yeah. say, his thing is, can he stay healthy? Right. Especially That's with all key. those carries. Can exactly. He, can no he and D'Anthony Thomas, how does he is figure he in? Because he, he, D'Anthony Thomas was such an X factor for them in the yeah. passing game. Absolutely. Hey, Duck fans. It may be summertime, but there's still plenty of Duck news going on, so let's get right into it. Duck football recruiting has been quite active in the past week. There were three new verbal commits. Keep in mind, none of these are binding until signing day in February, but it's nice to see so many kids eager to jump at a chance to beat Oregon Ducks. Some committing to be a Duck as soon as they were offered a scholarship, so that's awesome. First, it was John Munt declaring that he will be a duck. Munt is around a 6'5", 230-ish tight end from Modesto, California. It's about an hour's drive east of the Bay Area for those of you keeping score. He's rated a three-star prospect among the three major recruiting sites, Scout, Rivals, and 247. Uh, he's a tall kid that's drawn early comparisons to David Paulson, though maybe that's just because Paulson was the last guy to play at Oregon. Munt picked the Ducks over offers from much of the Pac-12, as well as Fresno State and San Diego State. So, welcome John Munt. On the heels of the Munt verbal, two days later came in another one, wide receiver Darren Carrington of San Diego. Now, if the name sounds vaguely familiar, Carrington's dad, Darren Carrington Sr., played safety for the Chargers in the 1990s, and he was on the team that went to the Super Bowl. Uh, Carrington is around 6'3", 180. He's another in what is becoming quite a typical trend at Oregon, actually, of sons of former players uh, coming to Eugene to uh, follow in the family tradition. So it's great to see. Carrington's considered a four-star on Scout. He's considered a three-star on Rivals and Duck Territory. So he plays receiver, quarterback, and cornerback for his high school team, and he's had quite a few offers, including Michigan and Vanderbilt, and about half of the Pac-12. In completing the trifecta of football verbal commits this past week was Chris Saise, late Thursday night. He's a quarterback slash safety tweener from American Canyon, California. That one's a bit harder to find on a map, but think a little north of the Bay Area, just past Vallejo. Now, Saisei's pretty tall for a corner, around 6 foot 2 ish, about 175. He's rated as a three star across all the services, so he might end up as a corner, he might be a safety. Uh, we'll see once he gets on campus and see how, how uh, coaches want to best use him. It's been a busy week for Saisei. He originally committed to Boise State last week, but then when the Ducks offered a scholarship, he quickly changed his mind. Now he's a Duck. And, any time that we can trash Boise State or beat them in anything whatsoever, it's a good thing. So lots of new duckies to obsess over. That puts Oregon's 2013 class at six early commits. But remember, it means nothing until the paper's signed and they qualify to get into school and they pick up the playbook and they earn their way onto the field through practice for playing time. So there's still a long road to go before we start seeing these guys compete, but it's great to see. Things are very busy in Eugene right now as the US Olympic trials are officially underway at Hayward Field. Thus far the unquestionable star has been Oregon's own Ashton Eaton. He's vying for a gold in the decathlon and looks like the weather isn't really cooperating much in Eugene but it hasn't dampened Eaton. He's had a 27 foot long jump. That's the second best in the US this year and that's a world record within the decathlon. Second event, the long jump, and Ashton Eaton takes that sprinter speed onto the long jump runway where he feels very comfortable. You can see the conditions deteriorating with the rain coming down more, temperature dropping. He checks up at the board, and the first of his three jumps, he gets out to another DECA world best, 27 feet, and he put it away. It was actually his second world record of the day. He set a new world record specifically for the decathlon, in the 100 in the first event on Friday. Now late in the day Friday, that was highlighted by Galen Rupp's dominant performance in the 10,000 meter. He won it in a time of 27.25 and he was waving and 
sticking his tongue out to the crowd down the home stretch as he had a, a huge lead, uh, an eight or nine second lead as he passed the finish line. So Galen Rupp is bound for the Olympics in London. He's one of many with Oregon ties that I think by the time the trials are done, we'll be bound for the Olympics. So congratulations to Galen Rupp and certainly Ashton Eaton. Best of luck in all of our duckies that are competing at Hayward Field. The trials will continue through the end of the month. So if you're in Eugene, head down to Hayward Field, rain or shine, probably rain. The postseason accolades continue to stream in as well as Oregon's wild thing, Jimmy Scherfe, AKA Kenny Powers, picked up his fourth All-American honor this week, being named to Baseball America's All-American second team. This season, he set the single season record at Oregon for saves, which not bad for a guy who actually started the year as a starter, not a reliever, which included an 11 strikeout game back in February that landed him the Pac-12 Pitcher of the Week award. So that's awesome to see, four All-American awards for Jimmy Scherfe. And for some that finished their time at Oregon recently and are already off to the next step, Oregon's two All-American male golfers this past year, Eugene Wong and Daniel Mernicke, both are now vying for the PGA. Wong won the 2012 Jack Nicklaus Award that's given to the nation's top collegiate golfer. Wong and Mernicke uh, led the team to a third place overall finish in the nation for the second year in a row. Mernicke's competing this weekend in the PGA Tours Travelers Championship, and Wong is going to be competing in his first professional tournament in about a month up in Canada. So good luck to both of them, and thank you for being Oregon Ducks. This is also a time when more TV schedules are coming out. There's new announcements every week emerging revolving around the new Pac-12 network. In addition to several Oregon football games that have already been announced, Duck Volleyball will also be prominently featured on the Pac-12 network when it first launches, but still no word on if it's going to be carried by any satellite providers. In fact, it sounds, it sounds like things are at a complete impasse. Uh, for now, it's okay, but if mid-August comes around and there's still no deal in place for DirecTV or Dish Network, start panicking. For me, if DirecTV doesn't have a deal in place by August 20th, that's my cutoff date. No deal for August 20th. I will be canceling all my services with DirecTV and switching to whoever does carry the Pac-12 network if a deal isn't in place by that day. And then there's the BCS or the death of the BCS. The BCS is dead, long live the BCS, I guess. <laughs> yes, we've asked for it for years. There will now be a four-team playoff. There's a lot of details to still be worked out, such as who is on the committee that picks the final four, what goes into the formula to decide those teams in the final four, how much butt kissing there will be to make sure that SEC teams and Texas and Notre Dame get boosted higher than they actually should so they get into the final four. Stuff like that. As details emerge we will no doubt address it but for now you know just be glad that we will have some form of a playoff to come. Also, congratulations to Mike Dunlap. He's a former Oregon Ducks assistant coach with the men's basketball team. He was named the new head coach for the Charlotte Bobcats in the NBA. And of course, along those same lines, congratulations to Oregon native Eric Spolstra, coach of the NBA champion Miami Heat. As for fishduck.com, things are getting very hectic behind the scenes. There's a lot that we want to launch on the site by the time football season comes around. Which, don't look now, but it's not far off. We're only sitting about 70-ish days away from kickoff, so it's coming up quick. We have some new features that are going to be coming to the site that we're very excited about. We've run into all kinds of snags in unveiling them. I know we've been promising them for a while, but soon. We promise soon. Now for stuff that is actually on the site. Josh Schlichter, uh, this was his week for fishduck.com. He created our weekly fishduck video this week, taking a close look at Oregon's mid-level read. In fact, you know, Josh was just all over the site. Not only did he have the video Tuesday, but then he was our featured guest on the one-on-one -on -one video podcast on Thursday. And he also had an article on Thursday discussing Mike Leach's six route and the Pac-12 spread laboratory and how that might be implemented by Chip Kelly. 
Other articles from this past week included a guest feature from Coach Curtis Peterson of StrongFootballCoach.com explaining split coverages. Josh White caused quite a stir asking if Lane Kiffin was right about DeAnthony Thomas. The first of hopefully many articles to come from our newest writer, Ethan Rivas, uh, talking about the impact of the two Lukes a decade ago. We had a guest article from Scott Reed of Duck Sports Authority talking recruiting mindsets using an example of Michigan's Brady Hoke. And there's plenty more. Be sure to check the directory or Fish Duck's front page to catch all that happened this past week. We also have a newsletter, so if you have not signed up, please do so. The area to sign up is on the front page. And now, my random tweet of the week. Hey, will you shut up? Thank you. Music recommendation time. This week I want to talk about a violinist who has been performing for years now with some well-established artists. Kishi Bashi. Kishibashi has been performing with Of Montreal, as well as Regina Spector, among others, for a while now, but with his new album, 151A, he steps into the limelight with some happy, intelligent pop music that is so incredibly catchy. It's almost a sure bet that it'll be appearing all over TV commercials in the coming months. This is fun music. It's utilizing a lot of looping and creative effects to create sugary, uplifting, joyous, intelligent indie rock. He's the darling of college radio and NPR right now, and it's only a short matter of time until Kishibashi becomes a household name. It's impossible to listen to this song, Bright Whites, and not smile. Go to Kishibashi.com. His album 151 is now available. It's been named one of the best albums of 2012 so far. His music was featured on a recent American Express commercial. It's just the perfect, bright, shiny summertime soundtrack. So that does it for me this week. Thanks, as always, for watching. Keep coming back to fishduck.com for daily articles and videos. So until next week, this is Kurt saying go fish, get hooked, go ducks. Yeah.